Good afternoon, members. I think this is a great day for children in North Carolina. Putting kids first and empowering families. This bill is the largest and the most expansive form of school choice that the state of North Carolina has seen. I was here during the start of it, and now I'm here when it's expanding. And it's an honor for me to carry this bill that is very important to so many families. Every single one of you have someone in your district likely using this scholarship or that you know someone. This bill is about putting kids first because we all should know by now that education is not one size fits all. We have kept that model going for years and years and years and every test result, every data, every national test will tell you most of our children are not where they need to be. That doesn't necessarily mean something is wrong with them or that they need a label. Maybe they do need extra help, but not all. Some children, and you as a parent might have had one that you raised, is just not loving school like the others. They're not as engaged. They're saying they hate school, their self-esteem suffers, and it's just not the place. Maybe the school is too large, maybe it's the type of curriculum, maybe they have dyslexia and need another location for them. So this would give families, parents, the opportunity, because they know their child the best, to say where their child should go to school. I am a strong supporter of our traditional public schools, of our charter schools, and our private schools. They all have a lot of similarities and some of the differences, and that's why families choose a different school because of what and how it might be able to reach their child the best. And as a mom myself, I can tell you I will do anything for my boys to have the best education that is the best for them because they are both very different. And I have been working on this issue for years. After I left the legislature and had a break, this was one of my big issues that I worked on. I've traveled the state of North Carolina and South Carolina. I've met hundreds of families, hundreds of children who at one point were not happy at school. They didn't want to be that curious learner that we all should want for them to be. They were miserable. They were maybe falling behind academically, maybe suddenly now getting in trouble. Their parents, it was miserable for them as well to see your child struggling, and maybe you don't know best how to help your child. But then I would hear the story about when they got in to their new school, and what a difference it made for the mood in their household, for their child's self-esteem, for everything for that family. And that their child may not be the greatest student, but they were happy, they were learning, they were engaged, they were involved, because that school fit that child's needs. And I believe that's what we should hope to offer for every child in North Carolina. As society is changing and evolving and with so many outside forces impacting our children, so many different things, we all must recognize that the same way of doing things that has been done in North Carolina for decades or even centuries, it's not up to date with who our children are and what families want and maybe what they don't want. This system will work on a tiered system to ensure that the children with the highest poverty needs will be the top priority. I've heard some very unique things said. Well, this will be for rich kids to use. Look at the data. Look at the system. That is just not true. This, as it is now, 
the highest poverty gets this scholarship. This just adds more money to the pot for higher needs students. There has been great success with many of these opportunity scholarship programs. And maybe it's not all A's, but maybe it's a child who wants to be a lifelong learner. Maybe they feel safe. They've made an adult relationship with their teacher and community. Maybe they're just going to go on and be great citizens. And a test score can't show you that. But as a parent, as, as someone in their church or as a basketball coach like I was, you can feel it. And every child is different. So I say that this is for kids first because it is. It's about children. It's not about adults. It's not about systems. It's not about one neighborhood versus another or one county versus another. It's about every child as a unique individual, a unique creation, and they deserve the very best that their parents can get for them and that their parents feel will work for them. I've heard someone say, well, private schools won't have any accountability. Well, that's just outrageous. <laughs> they would lose their customers, who would be the students, just as in any business. Um, so I know we'll hear some things that are not factual. And that's OK, because at the end of the day, as long as we focus on putting kids first, we win. So in conclusion, this bill allows families to act with the child's best interest. I know many families where two of their kids go to public school and one uses this to go to a private school because their youngest son needed this. The opening up the Opportunity Scholarship Program levels the playing field by ensuring that all families, all, have the right to tailor the learning of their child and it creates an incentive for the kids and for the schools to be best and put kids first. So I ask you today to put kids first and vote green. Thank you.